Hey guys, in this video I will finish my proof of USA 28 problem 6. After proving in last videos that it is possible to put n people into two rooms such that everyone knows an even number of persons in his room, we will show in this video that the number of ways to do that is actually a power of 2. So from now I'm going to assume that you have seen my video from last week. What we did there is to consider a certain operation on graphs. I'm going to um, explain that again. So let's consider some graph G and then we defined a new graph which I'm going to call G O minus V from now on where we take some vertex of G and first of all we start by removing that vertex and furthermore between all pairs of neighbors of V we flip their neighbor relationship. So we get those two new edges and remove that one. And what we did there is to take a look at any partition of the vertices in G or minus V that obeys um, this property given in the problem. I'm going to call those um, partitions nice partitions or configurations from now on. And we were actually able to show that if we start from such a configuration we can put V into that set where it has an even number of neighbors and then revert this operation to get a nice configuration in the original graph G. In that video we explained in detail why that works and one can actually see that this mapping between nice configurations in G or minus V and G is one to one. Therefore we can actually conclude that if we define C of G to be the number of nice configurations in G then C of G equals c of g or minus v for any vertex v and g of odd degree. At this point um, our approach kind of fails because now we can do our induction and end up with a graph where all the vertices are of even degree but then we cannot continue with that operation. So what we would really like is to get an operation which we can apply on a graph where all the vertices are of even degree such that we construct or get a vertex in the other graph where there exists a vertex of odd degree. Actually, there are not too many elementary operations for changing a graph such that the function c of g is invariant under them. But while playing around with this problem, you will probably find another such operation that is a little bit less complicated and I'm going to define this right now. So if we consider any graph V prime, then, well, we can just take a look at any vertex V of it again and define a new graph G plus uh, G prime O plus subscript V W, where we copy our original graph and then add a new vertex W and only connect it to the vertex V. Now it is clear that if we have any nice configuration in the graph G prime, then we can just add W to the set where V does not lie in and get a nice configuration in G prime O plus subscript V of W. And in any nice configuration of that graph, well, W must be in the set where V is not in because otherwise W would be of degree one. So we can just remove W and get a nice configuration of G prime. So this is also a one-to-one -one mapping and we get that C of G prime is equal to C of G prime O plus subscript V of W. And I quickly want to show an alternative proof for why this must also be true that one can immediately write down after having proved the first step. So alternative, we get that, well, note that doing an O plus subscript V of W and then doing O minus W again is nothing but G prime again because flipping all of the um, edges between neighbors of W in this graph does nothing. So this is just adding W and then removing it again. And this tells us that, well, C of G prime is equal to C of G prime 
O plus subscript V W O minus W, which is then nothing but C of G prime O plus subscript V W. So this is a really nice proof of that identity as well, but really just a side note. Let's get back to the proof. It might seem like doing that O plus subscript V operation doesn't really uh, work in the right direction for us because we want to use induction on our graph on the number of vertices and what we're doing right here is just to add a new vertex to our graph. To make this O plus operation work in our induction on the number of vertices we have to do at least two O minus operations to make up for it. But taking a look at the graph that we get for after doing the O plus operation and assuming that all of the vertices and that graph had even degree to begin with, we left all of the degrees unchanged except for W that has degree 1 now and the degree of V was incremented by 1 as well. Now what I've shown in my not so irrelevant alternative proof for that identity is that doing an O minus W on that graph again is basically the identity operation in total. So we would not like to do that. The only other option is to do an O minus V on that graph. So let's stay with this example and take a look at what G prime O plus subscript V of W all O minus V is equal to. Well, of course, we're going to remove the vertex V and we're going to flip all of the edges between neighbors of V. And actually, in this case, those are all other vertices of um, our graph. So those two are added and that is removed. So in any case, W is now connected to all of the original neighbors of V in our graph G prime. So let's consider some um, neighbor U of V for instance. And W is connected to all of the neighbors of V, but since V had even degree in G prime, W must also um, have uh, even degree now. Of course, that is with respect to this graph right here. So W would not be a suitable choice for another O minus operation because we have seen that um, C of G is only invariant under that operation if the vertex that we O minus has odd degree. Now, on the other hand, we see that in our example, all of the original neighbors of V, for instance, this vertex U right here, have degree one right now, so odd degree. Maybe we can prove that this must always be the case. And to do that, let's take a look at this graph once again. Here, V has an odd number of neighbors. One of them is U. Now, we are going to remove the edge U, V, of course, and we're going to flip all of the edges incident on U where the other vertex of that edge is also a neighbor of V. But since V has an odd number of neighbors right here, the number of neighbors of V that are not U is even. So we're going to flip an even number of edges plus removing that edge U, V right here. So in total, we get that, well, the degree of U with respect to B, where we call this graph B and that one A, well then the degree of U with respect to B must be equivalent by what I've said before of the degree of U with respect to A plus 1. And since that is an even number, that is just 1 mod 2. And well, this is basically enough to finish our induction step because now we know that right here, U, any original neighbor of V, has odd degree, so we can just do another O minus U operation, which is invariant under the function C. Now, this is really nice, and it seems like we can do an inductive step at any point, which is kind of contradictory, because then we would end up with an empty graph. So I'm going to do a warning, and we have to take a look 
where this induction step fails. So we have seen that if uh, for any neighbor of v in the original graph we can do another O minus right here, but well that only works if the vertex v was not isolated. So if there exists some v such that the degree of v with respect to g prime is not equal to zero. So in any case where we can find a vertex of non-zero degree, we can do the inductive step. So the only case we have to take a look at now, which is going to be our base case, is the empty graph. But now let's take a look at any graph g double prime that is empty. So consider, for example, the empty graph with five vertices and call the number of uh, vertices n double prime, well then any partition of those vertices into two sets must be nice because inside of each partition any vertex must still remain isolated and zero is even. So C of G double prime is equal to 2 to the power of N double prime. And this is the first point where we actually get powers of 2. Previously we have just shown that we can always reduce the number of vertices in a graph leaving the number C unchanged unless the graph is isolated. But for that case we have now proven that C of G double prime is actually a power of 2 and therefore we are done.